all people, could be explained with a pole or axis shift, or a shift of the Earth's crust through which enormous waves of water hundreds of metres high could develop. By dem es uh, unter Umständen sehr große uh, Wasserwellen und uh, hunderte von Meter hohe Wogen geben kann. My observations with this device go back over the last 10 years. During that time, the strength of the magnetic field has reduced by around 4 degrees. As the old prophecies have already predicted, the wheat will part from the chaff. Those people who can adapt to the faster flowing energy by extending their consciousness will survive the purification process. Those people, however, who desperately cling to the old reality will have difficulties adjusting their bodies to the faster frequency. Therefore, their process of aging will be accelerated. The great purification will divide mankind into two big groups. Those who will consciously want to recognize the spirit in its entirety and the others who will continue to believe only in the things visible and provable and therefore will exclude themselves from the opening of higher dimensions of consciousness. Many prophets, such as those mentioned in the Apocalypse of the Bible and by Nostradamus, have predicted that within the next stage of transition from the third dimension of consciousness into the fourth and fifth dimensions, large disasters will occur. Uh, the Apostle John tells us in Revelation chapter 1 and uh, verses 9, 10 and 11 that he was on the island of Patmos uh, because of the word of God, because of his faithfulness as a disciple of Jesus, because of his faithfulness as a prophet. Uh, when John focused upon the return of Jesus Christ the second time, he focused upon what we find in other places in the Bible about how Jesus will come and uh, why he will come and what will happen uh, when Jesus Christ comes. Uh, John, in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7, made it very clear that when Jesus Christ returns, every person who is alive on planet Earth at that time will witness that coming, every person will see him come. If you go to the last verses in Revelation chapter 6, you have it very clearly stated that at the time of the coming of Jesus Christ there's going to be a massive earthquake, uh, every island will move out of its place. Um, John uses the word saying that the heavens are going to roll back as it were and uh, the glory of Jesus Christ and the Father is going to be revealed to people Many people will be absolutely terrified by that event and, and we read in Revelation chapter 6 in the midst of the earthquake and the sun going dark and the moon turning to blood and stars falling from heaven, you read of people who will be terrified and will be crying out to the rocks and the mountains, uh, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits upon the throne and from the wrath or the judgment of the Lamb. The term Lamb is a symbol of Jesus Christ throughout Scripture. And so you read of the coming of Jesus Christ at that time. And then, of course, in answer to that question, who will be able to stand at that time, which is the question asked at the very end of Revelation chapter 6, you have the answer of Revelation chapter 7. You have uh, those spoken of as the 144,000, those who receive the seal of the living God uh, upon their foreheads, uh, and you read of them further as the great multitude as you read through Revelation chapter 7. A very detailed description of the coming of Jesus is given to us in Revelation chapter 14, verses 14 to 20, uh, where the coming of Jesus is described as a harvest. If one compares all the prophecies of writings such as the Bible, the secret revelations of John, the Quran, as well as writings of recent seers, and well over a hundred appearances of Mary until 1987, a shocking scenario of three large world events emerges. 
the three great judgments of the world stand for three large world wars, which in turn are fulfilling the group karma of whole nations. Two of these world wars have already occurred. Many believe the third will not happen. But what is the contribution of each individual so that the divine in its grace extinguishes the karma of each individual and of the nations? All seers and the messages of our mother of God speak of a third large war which will start in Europe. In particular, they mention troops with the strength of three armies invading from the east. And after political unrest, the bloody fall of a leader overnight. It is said in these prophecies that within a very short period, as many people will die as in the First and Second World Wars together. Europe's capital cities are predicted to burn during a limited atomic holocaust. Out of these horror visions, it is clear that China and the United States of America will be involved, along with Russia and the Muslims. After fierce battles, all of them will resort to emergency atomic action. Consequently, the supernatural judgment will inflict natural disasters to put an end to these horrific developments. It will then separate the wheat from the chaff by causing a large earthquake and darkness for three days to put an end to it all. A worldwide internal fire will be felt and seen by everyone and the fall of deadly dust has been predicted to accomplish the remaining cleanup of the karmic execution. There are prophecies in the book of Revelation about a big fire that will cleanse this earth. Uh, a very dramatic representation is given in Revelation 19, 20, uh, 19 and 20, uh, near the end of the apocalypse. In Revelation chapter 19, we read of the coming of Jesus uh, pictured as him riding on a white horse, a crown upon his head, and uh, he is coming forth as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and he comes to execute judgment against the the beast uh, and the false prophet. In other words, the two beast powers that are described in detail in Revelation chapter 13. The beast that comes up out of the sea is described as the beast, and the beast that comes up out of the earth in Revelation 13 verse 11 and following from there is described as a false prophet. And we find Jesus coming in Revelation 19, executing judgment upon the beast and the false prophet. And we read of them being thrown into a lake of fire at that time when he returns. And then at that time, we read in Revelation chapter 20 that the dragon will be taken, thrown into a great abyss, and be held in that abyss for a thousand years. And during that period of time, uh, the dragon, described also as the devil, the deceiver or Satan, uh, will not be able to attack or deceive uh, any person who is alive uh, at that time. And then at the end of this thousand years, as you come through to the latter part of Revelation 20, you find that uh, Jesus is pictured as, as returning to this earth um, uh, and uh, he comes with, with his people and a lake of fire comes and envelops the whole of the earth and purifies this earth. And so the sequence of events that we actually have in Revelation 19 and 20 is the second coming of Jesus, uh, the beast and false prophet facing um, damnation, as it were, in this lake of fire. Then the dragon held as a captive for a thousand years. Then Jesus Christ come into the earth again uh, with his people and a lake of fire enveloping the earth and cleansing the earth. As a result of that, we find a, a new act of creation after this fire has enveloped the earth where we read of a new heaven and a new earth. All this has been repeatedly predicted by the seers and all the prophecies which have been made at different times are roughly similar. Conspicuously, all agree on one thing, that these events will start at a time when all believe that peace is at hand. Is the future preordained? 
or have the seer seen God's master plan. Everything within the Omniversum is subject to cosmic cycles. Creation delivers everything according to the principle of duality. As day follows night, a plan for the evolution of humanity's development exists. Likewise, in the plan of creation, there is a cosmic night and a cosmic day. The last cosmic night of creation lasted about 26,000 years. During this cosmic night, man was separated from his divine self. Since the 1980s, we have entered...